This is the QJ SRK 400. SRK. नाम तो सुना ही होगा. Okay, okay. Sorry. Let's do it again. This is the QJ SRK 400. Every time I say that name, I'm reminded of the iconic dialogue, बड़े-बड़े देशों में छोटी-छोटी बातें, और that iconic pose. But I'm not gonna do any of that because this SRK has no connection with the famous Bollywood star you are thinking about right now. In fact, the SRK 400 is not even close to being as popular as the Bollywood ka Badsha in India. But let me tell you, in case you don't know, QJ, which stands for Kian Jiang, it is one of the largest manufacturers in China. It owns a couple of brands like Benelli, Kiwe in China, and it entered India in association with Adishwar Autoride in November last year. So Adishwar Autoride Group uh, sells a couple of motorcycles uh, from different brands like uh, Motomorini, Zontes, Benelli, etc. Now the SRK 400 directly goes up against the KTM 390 Duke. Now 390 Duke is a benchmark of sorts. It is one of the most attractive packages when it comes to performance, features, looks and the overall riding experience. So beating the 390 Duke in all of these areas is no easy feat. Can the SRK 400 do it? Let's find out. Let's start this with the aspect of SRK 400 that has truly blown my mind and it's this. So the exhaust note of the SRK 400 is a different oral treatment altogether. When you crank it up, it settles into a deep and intense growl. But when you rev it, you are treated with a loud roar which is deceiving and it might make you believe that maybe you are riding an inline 4. And this aspect of the SRK really elevates the overall riding experience of the SRK 400. Let's listen to it once again. I'm happy to report that the SRK 400 doesn't just sound well, but it also goes well. So this exhaust note might sound familiar to a lot of you because this engine is a derivative of one of the older Benelli engines. In fact, visually it looks identical to the TNT 300, which has been discontinued in India now. So uh, powering the SRK is a 400cc parallel twin liquid cooled engine, which churns out 40.3 bhp of max power and uh, 37 newton meters of peak torque. But do note that at 186 kg, it has a heavy curb weight, which is about 15 kgs more than the KTM 390 Duke. However, the SRK 400 masks its heft really well on the road. There's a good amount of torque from as low as 3000 RPM, which makes pottering around in the city extremely easy. You can be doing speeds as low as 40 kmph in 6th gear when the rev counter hovers around 2500 RPM. And when you accelerate, it pulls out smoothly and linearly without any knocking. Full marks to its tractability. But it truly comes into its element on an open road when you wring the throttle. While the acceleration is decent until 5000 RPM, it pulls hard beyond that and chases the horizon at a really brisk pace. Revving this engine hard and short shifting is extremely fun. This is further enhanced by the crisp throttle response, which responds promptly without any delay whatsoever. The engine feels calm and composed on the highway at 100 kmph, sitting at 5500 rpm. And when you are in the mood to be frivolous and have an open and free road at your disposal, the SRK can touch speeds of about 180 kmph. It could do with a better gearbox though. While the cogs shift with a nice click for the most part, the long throw of the gear lever makes upshifting cumbersome at times. I also came across false neutrals on some occasions. And despite boasting a twin-cylinder configuration, the engine gets a little YB. Once you cross 6000 RPM, there's a minor buzz creeping in on the handlebar and foot pegs. That's not all. It heats up as well. 
Spend about 10 minutes in crawling traffic and you start feeling warm air blowing on your thighs. But honestly, these niggles won't bother you much because they get overshadowed by the thrilling engine performance and its sweet sound. I wish the SRK400 had equally good stopping power. No, the brakes don't feel completely wooden. They do have a good bite but not strong enough to match this level of performance. You have to apply a substantial amount of input on the lever to come to a halt quickly. That's strange considering it comes equipped with two pedal type disc brakes on the front which should theoretically be better than a single disc setup. Even the ABS calibration could be better with lesser intrusion. Now the handling of the SRK400 is a mixed bag. When you go around longer sweeping corners, it tips in nicely and uh, carves the intended line beautifully. But when you come across tight hairpins or switchbacks, uh, the front end doesn't uh, deliver as sharp a response as you want it to and the overall dynamics feel a bit lazy. Similarly, uh, flicking the motorcycle from side to side while maneuvering through tight gaps in traffic is, doesn't feel really natural. Now don't get me wrong, it is not a slouch by any stretch. Uh, we are comparing here with the G310R and the KTM 390 Duke. These are the bikes which feel a bit telepathic in a sense that they are very responsive. And this is lesser responsive by a just small margin. And if you are someone who goes uh, really hard around corners, we would recommend you changing these tyres because these Maxxis rubbers deliver acceptable grip and feedback. But when you are leaned over too much and blast out of corners, the tyres feel a bit squirmy, especially the rear. Moving on to the comfort part, the suspension setup of the SRK400 delivers a nice and borderline plush ride quality. When we received the bike, the rear suspension was kicking back quite aggressively over sharper undulations. But the good thing is that the rear monoshock can be tweaked for rebound and preload both. Once we tweaked the rebound, the rear started feeling much better. Now, the front and rear both glide over minor undulations smoothly while only showing a bit of firmness over nastier stuff. Now that we are on the topic of comfort, let's talk about its ergonomics. So with a seat height of 785 mm, getting on the motorcycle is very easy. I'm 5 feet uh, 11 inches and as you can see, I can easily flat foot with my knees slightly bent. And when I come into the riding position, uh, it feels fairly upright with uh, a wide handlebar at your disposal which gives you great leverage when you're maneuvering through, uh, through city traffic and uh, these foot pegs are almost center set so the overall riding position is comfortable but I would have liked it to be slightly more committed to match the sporty persona of the motorcycle. Also uh, the foot peg should have been slightly uh, more upwards and at the rear because these start grazing the tarmac very soon when you uh, start pushing it hard around corners. And uh, it's better I don't talk much about the pillion seat because it's, it's really tiny and the uh, cushioning is just not enough. So you might be a little comfortable just uh, for a few minutes and after that it starts feeling inadequate. And also I must uh, tell you that at 186kg of curb weight, the SRK400 feels pretty heavy when you push it around the parking lot. Another factor that brings the desirability quotient of the SRK down is the lack of modern features. It gets an LCD console and full LED lighting. That's about it. The display shows just the basic data and misses out on Bluetooth connectivity. It is also deprived of other goodies like a slipper clutch, traction control, quick shifter and riding modes. Heck, it doesn't even get a USB charging port. Now, Although the SRK owners won't have flaunt-worthy features, the design instantly grabs the attention of the onlookers. The angry front fascia, the razor-sharp tank extensions and the skyward pointing tail, all of it lend it a mean and aesthetic stance. Interestingly, the entire bodywork is designed in a minimalistic way and the real visual mass is made up by the engine, the chunky trellis frame, thick USD forks and the offset monoshock. In terms of build quality though, the SRK is just about average. There's nothing seriously wrong to complain about. The paint quality is nice, there aren't any odd panel gaps and fitment of components is alright. However, 
The switch gear should have been more premium in terms of touch and feel. I could also hear a soft rattling noise from the front at higher revs. When you look at the spec sheet of the SRK 400, chances are that you won't have high expectations from the motorcycle. While the performance numbers are decent, they are still slightly lower than the KTM 390 Duke and uh, it is heavy while being seriously handicapped in terms of features. But when you crank up the motor and head out on the road, it delivers a very visceral experience. The way it shoots ahead while sounding absolutely nuts, it really boggles your mind. However, once you start spending more time with the SRK 400, all the shortcomings start getting more pronounced. The heavy feeling front end, uh, the lack of stopping power and uh, the absence of modern features. Also, uh, QJ Motors suffers from a serious deprivation of uh, sales and service reach and brand recall. Even if you ignore these issues, we can't really comment on the long-term reliability of the product since this is a new brand. For a motorcycle which cost about 3.70 lakh X showroom, these things are hard to overlook. But if you want a motorcycle which cost under 5 lakh on road, something that goes fast, sounds sonorous and uh, stands out visually, the SRK 400 is a lovely motorcycle.